devastating. Um, then, then, you know, the American government's not going to do shit about it. Okay, now look at, let's look at the debt in trap the in Africa. In decades, China has built large infrastructure projects in okay. almost every country in Africa. And this has made Western critics uncomfortable. China and Africa can forge an even stronger comprehensive strategic and cooperative partnership. A common portrayal of China's lending Optimus practices Crime J, thank you is for known the, as debt trap diplomacy. Thank you for the subs. A phrase made popular after being used in government documents during the Trump administration. The so-called debt trap is created when a country lends to poorer countries, intentionally overwhelming them with unsustainable debt, forcing them to surrender strategic assets or concede increased political leverage. But so far, there's no evidence that such a debt trap has been sprung in Africa. Now, there's always a certain grain of truth, like with every stereotype to it but it breaks down very, very quickly upon any type of serious examination. The focus on debt trap diplomacy is part of wider Western anxieties to- Guys, you can't fault the American government for thinking that China is operating in exactly the same ways that we do, okay? If you are a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. And sometimes you look at other people and you mistake them for hammers as well, okay? Maybe they're a screwdriver. Maybe they're not a hammer, okay? That's what's going on here when they say uh, China is doing debt trap diplomacy. Now, of course, I still, uh, and I have been saying this for a very long time. If you've been in this community for a long time, you already have heard me talk about this. We don't know what China will do when uh, the checks bounce, okay? Or we don't know what China will do when America decides to, uh, you know, I don't know, fund a fucking coup in a country because they want uh, more preferable treatment from the government uh, instead of the, the Chinese minds that they own. What if America were to do USSR, USSR style nationalization initiatives in a country and in an effort to like uh, get to the nationalization, they would beef up fucking communist, uh, you know, communist paramilitaries do a coup d'etat and then do a second coup d'etat on the communist paramilitaries and then privatize it again, but at the behest of Western nations instead of Chinese ones this time around. I'm obviously spitballing here. Who knows what the fuck they would do? I mean, that's not been done yet, okay? That hasn't been done yet. So, um, <laughs> but I wouldn't put it past them. I don't even know if they have the mileage anymore to be able to pull shit off like this, but... Why hasn't America done this in Africa? What do you mean? They, they, what? They have. I, I was just talking about, I was, I was talking about what, uh, what, what the article that I sent illustrates what happens when the check. The okay. Let's just watch. We'll Africa. see. We've already seen that Chinese investments in Chinese infrastructure projects have been linked to increasing Chinese influence within the host country ruling elite. That may end up becoming somewhat of a leverage point for China to push some of these countries or ruling elites to side with China on critical issues that are important to the U.S. or to its allies. But while the U.S. has focused its Africa strategy on aid and social services, China has been building. African governments themselves said we are tired of aid and charity. We want to do trade. We want to be treated like partners. The Chinese came along and said, great, we don't do aid and charity. We want to do business with you. Global Gateway will mobilize 300 billion euros till 2027. Now, the US and Europe are answering back with their own infrastructure initiatives to counter <laughs> China. But oh, African come on, bro. Oh, dude, what happened? I thought China was the one who fucking stole IP. What's going on, brother? You can't be, you can't be. <laughs> well, uh, we will do two belts and two roads initiative. How about that, okay? You know, one belt, one road, okay? How about two belts and two roads, okay? Yeah, that is right. We're giving you two belts. Experts are skeptical. At the end of the day, China has been that guy around the corner with, you know, a bouquet of flowers to Africa, the US, you know, Europe and the UK have time and time again said, be careful of the flowers you see out of the window. They have thorns on them. A 
in Ghana, the handover of power from the British government went off smoothly and with <laughs> dignity. From the 1950s into the 1970s, countries on the African continent gained independence from their European colonizers. US and European-led organizations like the IMF and the World Bank funded much-needed infrastructure across the... Yeah, this was sick, dude. I mean, this is always sick. So when I say conditional loans, or when we say debt trap capitalism in countries like this, what this means, okay, is first of all, the independence is completely conditional. It's always a fucking puppet, okay? And then that puppet is basically throwing its fucking labor force as a, a, uh, a newer, more gentler kind of slaves at the fucking problem, okay? To, to use their labor power and labor force to extract the natural resources, okay? And these building projects that they are engaging in do not belong to the nation, okay? The, the building projects that they are, uh, the, these, these infrastructure projects do not belong to the nation itself, but still belong to Western corporations. They're building it for Western corporations at the behest of Western capital and done through uh, the the same like supposed loans that uh, we are giving them, okay? We give them the money, and then more importantly than just giving them the money, we say you have to pay, uh, you have to pay the loans back, but also you you are gonna use this money to pay Western corporations, okay? So we're giving you this money, but the money has to be used on Western corporations. You can't be using it on your own. You can't be doing whatever you want with it. And then also on top of that, we are going to make sure that you can't, uh, if you want to like, I don't know, socialize medicine or, you know, build uh, infrastructure for yourself or build fucking hospitals or anything like that. We're going to say, fuck no, we have co complete control over your economy and you have to implement austerity measures now. We control your currency. We control everything that you do. Continent. So those are some of the conditions of an IMF payment now, the, or, or an IMF loan. Now, the difference there is the level of control that China has over the country with their loans, what the conditions of a Chinese loan looks like, and what the infrastructure projects with a Chinese uh, uh, backing uh, looks like. But that slowly stopped. The United States and Europe kind of backed away from infrastructure in the 60s and 70s. It's something that, that we did very, very well for a long time in the post-war era. We built vast amounts of infrastructure throughout the world. And one of the things you see in Africa is that so much of the railways and the highways and the infrastructure was built during the colonial period. Uh, and back then it was quite solid, but it's been decrepit because the former colonial governments are not plowing in lots of money. Enter China. As early as the 1970s, Beijing began building the Tazara Railway, a link between the Zambian town of Kapiriamposhi and Dar es Salaam port in Tanzania. At the time, it was the longest railway in sub-Saharan Africa, allowing Zambia to ship copper, bypassing white rural Rhodesia and South Africa. It also gave China much-needed political allies. Beijing said, we have problems, you have problems, we will help you out and they embarked on this. And this is really some of the early seeds uh, that China sowed in Africa that later, you know, came to clearly define the divide between the West and, and the East as far as China's involvement in Africa is concerned. In the early 2000s, as China looked to expand... The infrastructure they built was just to more efficiently extract resources? Of course, dude. That is literally, yeah, yeah, but that's what China is doing too. Don't, don't misunderstand the situation here. Like, it's not like China's fucking building roads and shit specifically for uh, the goodness and the kindness of like the people living in Ghana or, or any of these other countries. Like they're, they're doing it. Uh, they're doing it specifically because they want to more efficiently extract resources, but it's how you extract those resources. And that's where... That is where ethics kick in and what you do. And markets and political influence abroad, its investment in Africa ramped up. 
the Chinese said, well, guess what? We are the best in the world now at producing large-scale infrastructure. And yes, D. Darshan is correct. The reason why local African governments don't have the money to build their own infrastructure is because in order to be a part of the global market, you have to let America and Europe do your resource extraction. How much you give back to the country and how much autonomy you allow the country to have will greatly improve your chances of legitimately becoming a competitor in the marketplace. But of course, it's in the best interest of every country to keep you down. Obviously, they didn't get the same head start given uh, the prevalence of, in, mo in the most reductive terms, the Maxim gun and the colonial superpowers coming into Africa and starving it and enslaving it for a, a long time. So now, uh, with, the, with the lack of reparations and making these conditional loans come across as reparations while still uh, taking all of that wealth back to the Western world, uh, and, and using it specifically for resource extraction, uh, using African nations as like a, like a mediator in the, in the conversation and not actually uh, allow them to see their own, to realize their own profits in their own grounds, okay? Um, that has kept these countries, uh, that has kept these countries poor. That's why, yes, uh, another chatter said, Africa was looted. It's not poor, it was looted. It's true. Fast and cheap and we have a surplus of capital. So we'll loan you the money. We have our great contracting companies. We have all of this skill and all this ability to deliver fast and cheap. And in that sense, it was really an ideal match. They recognized what Africa's development stage was. And they said, you know what? 30 years ago, that was us. We recognize a lot of what's going on here. You don't have enough infrastructure. You have a large population that's growing quickly. Also, let's not underestimate there is a shared history here of anti-colonial struggle. So you tick all of those different boxes and Africa made a lot of sense for the Chinese to come in. China is currently involved in an estimated 35 African countries and has made significant contributions to their infrastructure, including ports, railways and power plants. Using that logic, you can also see that Africa had a hundred to two hundred thousand year head start on the rest of the world. That logic, the fuck do you mean? It doesn't matter if it didn't develop by way of trade, uh, in a way or or for a multitude of different reasons as to why certain fucking countries, due to weather or proximity to one another, were able to fucking you know develop faster. And then once countries decided, once imperial powers decided to uh, engage in the act of colonialism, they just ripped this uh, entire continent to fucking shreds and stole everything. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, you think that it's first of all the reason why that person said uh, uh, what he said is because he's you know he's he's pointing at a very racist idea, and that idea is that like Africans somehow are inferior. That's why they, despite having a two hundred thousand year start, were uh, able were not able to uh, fucking build themselves. Or the idea that like because humanity started in Africa, technically that like what they're enslaving themselves. They just you know. They, they evolved into white people elsewhere and then came back and enslaved themselves, uh, technically, right? Like, it's, it's fucking insane. You're, you're trying to find a justification for colonialism uh, when, you know, you're just a racist piece of shit. Okay. Um, they did have a great start, just not in the Industrial Revolution. The richest person ever was in Africa. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is when they had a fucking great head start, it's not like they were doing to European countries or the, or, or the original developments of, of Europe what Europe did to Africa, okay? That's the difference. So shut the fuck up. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter that the richest person on the planet was in fucking Africa at a certain point. It's like the golden age of, of Islam happened, okay? But now, when you look at the Middle East and the MENA region in general, and you look at even like uh, Asia, it, it literally doesn't matter because that development has halted greatly as a consequence of imperialism. Okay? Do you understand? 
pointing to it by being like, whoa, this is where civilizations were born. What the fuck is, is a silly notion. Slaves were not only black people. Oh my God. Okay, dude, I know it doesn't matter. We're talking about chattel slavery. Okay. Europe is also full of peninsulas and mountain ranges for protection. It's in the perfect place to grow with constant invasion. Africa has a lot let geography to its advantage to grow like Europe in a world marketplace. Anyway, people don't get how golden age of Islam directly caused the white Protestant Christian supremacy that during the industrial revolution colonized the world. I mean, that's why I always say culture is shared. Okay. It's a completely shared concept. I don't know what's going on. I think Twitch is breaking a little bit. We're not seeing sub sub badges. And also, uh, not only that, but you can't send any uh, links right now. Which really sucks because at the top of the hour, there's a 60 second ad break. I hope it doesn't serve an ad for all of you when I do run that ad break. Uh, because as you probably already know, if you want to avoid those ads at the top of the hour, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or you can do for free with a Twitch Prime. Um, if you, if you, you know, use, if you subscribe now, you won't be able to see the ads. So there's that. I don't even know if you can subscribe though, because Right now, shit's a little broken. Just, you know, try it out. Try out your Twitch Prime. It's free. I'm not seeing any notifications, so maybe you can't. Anyway, here's the woman ad break now. If it runs an ad for all of us, we should sue Twitch real quick. Is it running an ad? Did you guys see it? We can disable that part of the links filter, but I don't think it's worth risking having non-sub post links. Yeah. It's estimated that China has invested more than $340 billion in Africa. So compared to how much China is investing across the world, this may not be as much, but for Africa, it's a lot of money because of the huge infrastructure gap uh, that Africa faces. But there are noticeable differences between Chinese financing and how the West lends, historically with low interest rates and flexible terms. There must be over millions of different types of loans out there. But if you were to take an eagle's eye view of the different kinds of loans involving Chinese lenders, then you can broadly categorize them into three different types. The loans fall into three categories. Zero interest loans offered as aid, concessional loans which have a lower interest rate often intended for large infrastructure projects, and the most common, commercial loans with higher interest rates in line with what you would get from a typical private bank. One of the very interesting trends that... You're wrong about Muslims not doing imperialism in the golden age of Islam. They just did it in South Asia. It wasn't as brutal economically. No, 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 no. I was talking about Western expansion, which there were efforts to, but, you know... They didn't BC succeed in the same way that they didn't succeed in the same way that that Western countries were able to fucking rob and destroy Africa. Researchers Nothing compares to that. Discuss Chinese. Of course, they did a lot of imperialism. A tendency to bunch all three together. Well, the very first question you should ask yourself whenever you see something like that is, well, are they comparing apples to oranges? Because if you're comparing commercial loans to something available from the World Bank or one of its different agencies, then you're not really comparing like for like. And the fact of the matter is this, and I hope the borrowers out there are listening, 95%, if not 99%, of the loan agreement are there in favor of the lenders, no matter who you deal with. This is because by the time you sign that loan agreement and you get the money, you'll have the money in your hands. And the only thing the bank will have is a piece of paper. That is why the loan agreements are in their favor. In one report which analyzed 100 Chinese contracts, it revealed that the loans are structured to give an advantage over other creditors, 
and allows action to be taken if the borrower acts contrary to the interests of a People's Republic of China entity. There are also unusual clauses that shroud agreements in secrecy. When you look at multilateral lenders like the World Bank and the different agencies, they're sharing talking to me about who turkey colonized bitch you think i don't know 1453 best year of my life turkey colonized syria iraq palestine egypt libya tunisia algeria the hejaz Aden, the gulf coast the caucus region greece macedonia albania bulgaria romania serbia bosnia hungary southern ukraine and the crimea they tried to colonize iran italy and austria as well by the way considering what the ottoman empire did to be colonialism like what fucking uh, uh you know france or england or portugal or spain has done is laughable uh sorry it's just not even like you can say i'm a fucking ottoman supremacist or whatever the fuck or you can say i'm biased but you are literally ahistoric in your approach if you think that these two any of these countries are even remotely comparable to what the western world has done straight the fuck up I will absolutely stand by that, okay? It's like comparing chattel slavery to the fucking uh, Dev Shidma program, okay? I I ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. You do not understand what the fuck you're talking about if that's your take. When you talk about Armenia, of course, that's a genocide. Okay, that 100%, that's a genocide. Yes, that is comparable to the colonialism that, uh, you know, Western nations have engaged. But calling that colonialism is, is it, it dumb. Because there's a different terminology for it. It's empire shit. It's just straight up empire shit. But you, it comes across as though you're defending Western colonialism when you, when you make that uh, comparison. Um, but as far as, uh, as far as like, uh, the Ottoman empire, of course it's empire. Like they did, they did some fucked up shit. Of course they did fucked up shit. I think your view on the Ottoman empire is skewed by your early education. No, of course. No, the Ottoman empire absolutely without a doubt did fucked up shit. You're crazy to say that they did not. Okay. That's literally, that's what empires do. There is no, there is no empire that did that, that you know, uh, has, has, uh, why are there suddenly 28,000 experts on the Ottoman empire? It's just how it is, baby. Like motherfucker said the Ottoman empire colonized Palestine, right? Like that's hilarious. Literally go ask a Palestinian person if they would rather be under the fucking rule of the ottoman empire right now or what the british empire has done to palestine like can you imagine dropping palestine in that fucking convo like are you kidding me dude are you fucking insane wild <laughs> dude go ask palestinians if they think if they would literally beg for fucking ottoman rule right now fuck it you can literally ask the average even North African countries that were also closer to colonialism uh, with respect to what like the Ottoman Empire did than anything else that you've pointed out thus far. Even half of those fucking countries right now would say, hey, maybe the bargain that we engaged in uh, with, uh, with the British and, and with the French was not exactly a great one considering that they told us we would get sovereignty and that just meant, you know, being under their rule. You know? So, as a Bosnian, even though you guys subjugated us for 500 years, at least you gave us Islam, alhamdulillah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. King Leopold cut off the hands and feet of African men and women and children in the Belgian Congo. Not the same as Ottomans at all. West was terribly cruel. Yeah, I mean, 
But the, the Ottoman Empire did some fucking, you know, of course, it was an empire. Uh, they, they did some fucked up shit. I mean, there's the eunuchs in the fucking uh, harem, for example, which wasn't like common practice in comparison to like, you know, the, the mass production of fucking chattel slavery using humans as straight up slaves uh, or, or nearly as perverse uh, or as popular as what King Leopold was doing or even fucking Christopher Columbus, to be honest. But, you know, there were still eunuchs. Uh, in in the the uh, harems, literally did that. <sighs> the British used to cut the Bengali's thumb so that we couldn't revive our garment industry, which was more popular than the British one. Uh, other than a massacre, Al Jawazi massacre, massacres of the Albanians in the Bal Balkan Wars, massacre of Aleppo, Armenian genocide, attack on Serbs during the Serbian Ottoman War. Of course, these are, this is all valid, straight up. You're, you know, I, I don't know if you're like copy pasting Wikipedia page, but yeah, you're you're right to say that that is, uh, that is unacceptable. That's empire shit. You think you had Albanian Janissary ancestors? Maybe you're actually Albanian. Uh, it's also not comparable because the Ottoman Empire no longer exists and Turkey is nowhere near the power it did 200 years ago. Of course. But there's a reason why you hear about Stalin's uh, famine and never about uh, the manufactured famine that Churchill engaged in, okay? Okay. That's because the West controls the flow of information. Okay? Just remember that. Like, you just, most of you have no fucking idea. Anyway, let's get Shareholders continue. of countries, and they're required to publish their lending and activities just to be transparent. They don't have any choice. On the other hand, when you come to commercial banks, then you'll see a very different case. And that is banks often are under a duty of confidentiality to their clients. I think the Chinese banks are no different. But the rush to give out loans. You are biased because of your Turkish education and Chad is biased because they have no education. You can see the difference in religion. Most of those former territories of Ottomans are still Christian, but Europeans enforce their religion pretty harshly on the territories they conquered. Yes. I didn't want to get into that, but that is the main difference between Ottoman imperialism and other imperial powers uh, in that same time period or even further after that same time period. The, the idea of like doing missionary work was, was not, uh, not the same thing. I mean, there certainly was still conversions that occurred, obviously, in the name of Islam, but the reality was that uh, the most you got was a tax, a, an additional tax for not being Muslim, and that was it. Uh, which is far more preferable to the fucking mass enslavement, murder, and and forcible fucking re-education of of all uh, all peoples that you are subjugating. Um, another fun fact is that the Ottoman Empire historically was always uh, a friend to the Jews and routinely opened up its, uh, its, its doors to Jews that were escaping pogroms throughout history. So there's that element as well. So much so that if I'm not mistaken, Herzl, I believe, originally went to, uh, uh, went to the, the uh, emperor, emperor at the time to ask uh, for Palestine uh, before anything else. Which, of course, uh, they said no to, but... Stop running PR for the Ottomans. Isn't that a factor of Islam and not the Ottomans? Islam makes explicit carve-outs to protect people of the book and other monotheists so as long as they are not idol worshippers. Yeah. 
Don't get me started on the comparison of the Dev Shinman program, which this person is actually pointing to, which is literally like in a different fucking layer, uh, in on a different fucking stratosphere in comparison to chattel slavery. Again, we're comparing slavery to slavery, but uh, obviously it's different. But you're right. In a weird way, I guess, sort of exploitative way, that there was also a way for venues for non-Turks to gain power in the Ottoman Empire and Ottoman court-like Janissaries. Almost all of the famous architects, uh, artists that, uh, that, that rose through the ranks were uh, risen through the Dev Shinma program. No such comparison exists in, in the West. Still wrong. Still, of course, it's still wrong, but like I've mentioned before, uh, that like you can't. Dev Shirma programming is just yoke, but me on No, no, I think it's Dev Shirma. Dev Shirma is how they say it. Anyway, let's continue by the Chinese has meant some of their early investments weren't as profitable as projected. So when China stepped into the field, it was much welcomed by the developing world that there would be increased financing for infrastructure. However, with the rush to get projects off the ground, to put them into action and to begin construction, critical due diligence was often left by the wayside. Financial sustainability, Good call, social Fizz. and environmental Thank sustainability you. I gotta, I gotta assessments fix that. kind of never were done or were done haphazardly or were simply not transparent or available to the populations. What this has ended up causing is states to take on projects that they initially thought were affordable, but unfortunately, they've been now saddled by debt. China is coming for its pound of flesh in Uganda. In 2021, the Entebbe International Airport in Uganda came under fire after local media reported that the airport would be taken over by China. Oh yeah, this is the this we is the one this instance, I got to pay all a debt back. trap. After closer examination of the contract, it was found there was no debt trap, and both sides have denied that the airport is in danger of a takeover. I think there is an assumption that certain governments are not able to look after themselves, or they're not either not sophisticated enough. Or, or just simply too corrupt to look after its own interests. I think in my personal uh, view and experience, that just simply hasn't been true. Experts say more should be done by borrowing countries to make sure loans are more favorable to their interests. But the Chinese argue that the risk level is higher in African countries and greater repayment assurances are needed for loans that might not otherwise be available. Certainly in my 20 years of experience, I've never seen a case where the Chinese bank will just say, look, don't read this, just sign on the dotted line. In fact, they will spend days and days and they're sitting with us going through every line of the document and making sure the other side understands because they know in 10 years time, if they don't explain this clearly, this is going to come back and haunt them. Certainly there are issues with how China finances projects. There are issues around transparency, but I don't think this is some sort of grand master plan from Beijing in order to ensnare developing countries into debt and become further beholden to Beijing. In Kenya and Nigeria, debts to Beijing are growing. These include Kenya's $3.6 billion railway from Mombasa to Nairobi, which reportedly lost $200 million in three years of operation and a $1.3 billion loan from the China Exim Bank to fund Nigeria's largest infrastructure project, a 157-kilometer segment of the Lagos-Kano Railway. Wait, do these motherfuckers have high-speed rail before we do? I'm going to lose it, dude. Okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm done, dude. I did not know. No, 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 no. That's fucked up. That is... Holy shit, dude. Holy fucking shit. Literally better to be a colonial subject to a different fucking country than be the imperial superpower of the United States of America. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not saying that the One Belt, One Road initiative is neocolonialism, but what the fuck? I mean, doesn't that piss you off? You're an American citizen. Doesn't that make you like a little bit angry? Just think about that for a second. What have we done in Nigeria, as I showed before? Fucking shell corporation using, you know... Uh, warlords to to uh, kidnap people and shit, okay? 
uh, it, whenever, whenever people don't act in the way that, the, that corresponds to the desires of an American corporation. China is building them fucking high-speed rail, dude. We don't even have that. That's so... Mmm. Mmm. Let's see. Oh, there is no... They haven't. They're, they haven't yet... No, they just wait. No, they do. No, this is the Lagos one is 330 kilometers. Yeah, this is a 37 kilometer uh, intracity rail system. Oh my God, they literally do. <laughs> oh my God, Lagos has high speed rail. We don't. Oh, wow. That's fucking tight. That's crazy. The government itself can't afford to finance these things. The private sector isn't really stepping up. Bro, China, please, please, dude, please. I will be your colonial subject. Please, let me get some trains. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, please, please just take over. Just take over California. Xi Jinping, please take over California. Cut these fucking... Just, just cut the fucking commute down. Oh my God. Imagine the possibilities. China takes over California. Okay. We become its colonial subject. Okay. China is, uh, California is now a vassal state that, that, uh, you know, uh, praises is liberated by Xi. Okay. California. Actually, they changed the name to California. Okay. And then, uh, oh God, the fucking, Oh, the traffic. It would it would abolish. There would be no traffic. Pee pee poof traffic, dude. Oh, just so much public transit, dude. What the fuck? Trade Taiwan for California? <laughs> the West has not got a alternative uh, program, so therefore China is the only game in town and the terms of the loans are reasonable. At the same time, you have members of the National Assembly, particularly from the main opposition party, vocally criticizing the government for what they perceive to be a lack of transparency around the management of the loans from China. They often um, articulate this uh, worry that you hear in other parts of Africa that uh, China will try and seize Nigerian assets in the event of a default by the Nigerian government. But looking closer at Kenya and Nigeria's total public debt, it doesn't appear that China's in a position to use the debt it's owed as leverage. In Kenya, Chinese loans account for about 10% of the country's $70 billion total debt. And it's even less acute in Nigeria, where the Chinese debts are just about 3 to 4%. So again, we have to focus on the data as it is, not as these narratives and these storytelling, which, which we have these fantasies that Kenya is going to be taken over by the Chinese. One country cannot control another country just by owning 4 to 10 percent of its debt. Only a handful of countries on the African continent have a significant amount of debt owed to China, and most of them owe much more to private bond markets. Africa does not have a Chinese debt problem. Angola. Yeah, where they, where they, where, where are those private debt uh, markets uh, is centered? I think. Weights about a third of all Chinese debt in Africa. So take Angola out of the issue, then you have an even less serious problem in that respect. So it's very important that we narrow down this problem to be what it is. But it only takes one bad deal to affirm Western fears. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, a controversial method of borrowing based on future natural resource revenue has meant some projects have fallen victim to corruption. Congo has a very, very significant uh, mining industry. It's Africa's biggest producer of copper. It's by far the world's biggest producer of cobalt. 
Cobalt is a key ingredient in the rechargeable batteries that power electric vehicles. You hear politicians talk about Congo saying that High-speed rails aren't worth the toxic pollution of rare earth mining and processing. Dog, I'm not like, dude, 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 what do you mean, dude? You're literally on Twitch. Are you, you're, you're currently on Twitch. If you're on Twitch, you can't talk about the pollution of rare earth metal mining. What are you talking about? How else are you going to fucking, you need a battery. How, how are you going to fucking put batteries in your, in your phone and, and everything else? Also, ultimately, high-speed rail is infinitely better at, at unironically fucking destroying the, the emissions produced by a fleet of vehicles that, like, singular individuals drive on a daily fucking basis. Are you kidding me? That's why, what do I always say? Blow up every fucking cruise ship, okay? And, and high-speed rail and public transit across the board. No more cruise ships. And only allow fucking and and really beef up uh, public transit. You would be able to unironically reduce a, a fuckload of emissions with that. Just that alone. That we are to cobalt as Saudi Arabia is to oil. However, up until now, at least the um, benefits to government revenue and the benefits to the population at large have been uh, rather limited. In 2008, China and the Democratic Republic of Congo agreed that Chinese companies would finance $3 billion worth of infrastructure. <laughs> I love this. This doesn't show the bad side. The bad side of it though, they do routinely engage in large scale corruption, routinely engage in the same mindless infrastructure building without actually looking at its feasibility, which they've done in, within China as well. Dude, who cares? I, I just, I hate it. It's like, that, that's that got real fucking, the postal service doesn't actually turn profit energy, okay? It's infrastructure. Uh, do the infrastructure. It's fine. <clears throat> the corruption side is, of course, uh, a problem. And uh, unfortunately, no matter what happens, you know, there's still corruption. Benefits to the population at large have been uh, rather Yeah, this limited. is real. This is very real. Like, it's not like these dudes, I mean, other than like the, the infrastructure development, the, the average fucking person in Congo is not realizing the, the wealth that they are extracting from the ground. You know what I mean? Historically speaking, though, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place and they prefer, up until now at least, they prefer the Chinese... Uh, uh, loans in the Chinese development to the Western one. And there's obvious reasons why they don't like the Western one. I mean, come on, dude. It's fucking Congo. Historically, the Chinese man has not fucking cut their hands and feet. You know? Maybe that has something to do with it, right? Shouts out to the fake country of Belgium, which doesn't is not a real country. It's just a project. It exists in the minds of people that say that they're from Belgium. <laughs> in 2008, China and the Democratic Republic of Congo agreed that Chinese companies would finance $3 billion worth of infrastructure and build a $3.2 billion copper and cobalt project whose tax-free profits would repay both investments. China, with the help of these mines, has now come to dominate an industry at the heart of future technologies. And leaked documents reveal millions of dollars that flow from Chinese entities, including the multi-billion dollar mining project, to the family and associates of Congo's then-president, Joseph Kabila. If the example of Congo applies elsewhere, these companies operate uh, with a real deliberate lack of transparency and if they find a willing partner in a government, as they did in Joseph Kabila's government, this lack of transparency can uh, extend to and really envelop the relationship between the state and these mining companies. There is a lot of anxiety in the West over China's involvement 
anywhere really because it's a strong number two to the U.S. And uh, I mean, they own like eighty percent, right? China, China currently owns like around eighty percent of all cobalt production on the planet. That is a terrifying prospect for the United States of America. And if you watch the New York Times Daily uh, earlier today, then uh, you would realize that the, they they attribute that to America being too busy with oil. And that's when China was able to, throughout the seventies and onwards, uh, be able to to develop relationships within the Congo and in other African nations that the America uh, was was supposed to do. But unfortunately, we just had enough. We didn't have enough bandwidth. Okay. Uh, literally every mining company in the continent is corrupt. Not like this is an outlier. No, this is this is the classic case of like, oh, it's someone else doing it, so it has to be perfect and and non-corrupt. Of course, it's not. That doesn't make it okay. By the way, we criticize once again. We always criticize American companies. We criticize West Virginia. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> we criticize uh, uh, the fucking coal miners, uh, the treatment of coal miners in the United States of America. Obviously. Uh, there is still going to be corruption, uh, but it would be better if uh, the, the Chinese government gave them further allowances to, at the very least, develop their country and, and give more back to their workforce. We also invented integrated circuits, but outsourced the expertise and let ourselves become dependent on other countries because it made sense under short-sighted capitalism. Wait, when you said the daily today was incredible were you being sarcastic no it was it was incredibly revealing it, they just don't even hide it like the the media is supposed to be uh a a force that that speaks out against like america's imperialist interests or whatever right but uh if you watch the daily today you understand that the entire purpose of the new york times is to not uh curb back imperialism but rather advocate for it and also demand it in certain instances, uh, which is precisely what today's daily was about, which was why the fuck did America allow, why the fuck did America allow China to control all of the fucking cobalt production? Literally, go listen to it and they will straight up, there's no neutrality there. There's no real interest in in uh, the, the experience of, of the people in Congo, normally they at least, at least they would like act like they, they give a shit. You know what I mean? But they just, they fucking threw that out the window. Gosh, it's almost like New York Times live in the same country. Dude, you are such a puppet if you think that the, that the fucking gray lady, okay? The paper of record is supposed to fucking churn out State Department propaganda, hook, line, and sinker. What the fuck are you talking about? It's supposed to be contentious, weirdo. That's what we, you can't on the one hand hype up democracy and claim that like liberal capitalist West, uh, Western nations are better than China, which is authoritarian and all the media is controlled by the fucking state and then turn around and be like, but when the fucking private corporations independently are doing state department media and state department PR, that's actually understandable and reasonable, then it's the same shit, which of course you are correct. It is the same shit, uh, straight up. It is. It's just one is, uh, you know, one is uh, a, a built around the false premise that um, one is built around the false premise that there is like actual freedom of, of information flow and that uh, there are um, there is a genuine interest within uh, our private institutions and the media to like actually be adversarial to the to the state. Uh, and and constantly question the interests, the foreign interests that the American state has. No, but that's but that's not the case. That's not real. That's never been real, and it will never be real. Subs are back, baby. Let's go. Very strong links uh, with Africa, uh, setting up a lot of logistical supply chains uh, in Africa, preparing to expand uh, its trade and take it to to the next level, is worrisome. Because whatever happens in Africa or whatever happens in Asia, ultimately can affect the world order. There's a lot at stake. Ideology may also be on the line. Countries that receive help from the US or European multilateral development banks often require values that fall in line with democratic nations. 
anti-corruption, good governance, transparency, participation, inclusion. These are things that really matter. We should want projects that are beneficial to the populations, that don't negatively affect them. And so while it may hinder the U.S. in being able to lend to certain countries, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. When countries in Africa take help from China, they're expected to side with or at least not participate in the condemnation of China on key issues including Taiwan and allegations of forced labor in Xinjiang. On these sensitive red line issues, and Taiwan is certainly one of them, this is where the political... Uh-oh. 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 Another nation? Another superpower saying they have a red line? Uh-oh. Wait a minute. We don't like that. We don't like that, dude. Demonstrably, we don't like that. We fucking, ooh, we will go over that. We will step over that red line, dude. Uh-oh. The relationship uh, becomes more evident and much more important. Africa, more than almost any other region in the world, tends to vote as a block in major international organizations and tends to express itself as a group, if not the whole continent. And again, this is the political symbolism that's becoming increasingly important to China from a region like Africa that is so important to the Chinese, much more so in many ways than the resources, which again, aren't as important to China simply because they can buy the resources now from any number of other places. But getting this kind of political support is very important in today's geopolitical environment. I think this is bullshit for the record straight up i think might is right and i think whoever has the biggest dick i.e the best productive capabilities wins in the long run and i think china's interest is not about fucking gaining like um uh, i don't know not letting the re the the fucking united nations like yell at them for uh i don't know doing whatever the fuck like hanifying uh xinjiang you know what i mean they don't give a shit they're gonna do that they're gonna do whatever the fuck they want to do and there's literally nothing you can do about it um, not that it's right, obviously it's not, but, uh, I think that the, the real reason why they are, are slowly and steadily building these, uh, relationships is to beef up their productive forces. If you think about it from just like an econ 101, uh, point of view, they are engaging in horizontal and vertical expansion. That's it. If you look at nations like corporations, that's precisely what they're doing. That's what America has done for a very long time. That's what America completely uh, destroyed for short-term profit. And that's what's going on now. I think that uh, the... the uh, I think that the idea that uh, like, they need the votes of, like, you know, African nations uh, to, to be able to, like, flex their fucking uh, political capital in the... Uh, political capital in the fucking... In, in like global affairs is uh, whatever you know it's just okay it's you know eh, additional they would more they would rather uh utilize australia than uh these these collection of african uh, countries they just want i think what their interest in africa is more so uh a stronger uh and and uh, as the chatter also pointed out a stronger and loyal uh trade partner Um, or could it be their population is about to get as old as average Japan? But the Chinese population? Brother. That's, you know, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch, I think. Um, if you were to say that they are, they have actually a blossoming middle class, if you want to use a fucking capitalist term, and therefore are no longer able to be a productive labor force that is, uh, you know, competitive with the rest of the planet. That's one thing, which is precisely why the, you know, rate of profit has a tendency to fall in situations like this. So what do you do? You look for other countries that you need to develop better relationships with and continue on uh, with the, with the uh, industrial capabilities uh, that, that, the Western world uh, desperately relies on to maintain their profit margins, of course. The, 
the effect on the one shot policy or coming to bear the population of young working class people is going to go down? Of course, but. What? The idea that might makes right and the, uh, then the idea that the country with the highest productive ca capacity will ultimately win is faulty. Like, what do they win? Uh, they become the hegemonic superpower that controls the planet. Order expansion, resource expansion, migration slash workforce expansion. You literally just described what superpowers do. You just described like the main goal of countries is, is wielding the same kind of influence that America has over the world right now. And, and then said like, it's not a big deal. That's it. That's just, you know. We want to show that a democratic, value-driven approach can deliver on the most pressing challenges. While the US and Europe haven't attempted to try and match China's investment on the continent, they have started work to offer alternatives. The EU's Global Gateway aims to supply 300 billion euros globally between 2020 and 2027. And Build Back Better World, or B3W, from the US aims to address the infrastructure needed in developing countries. Democracies are messy. Things take time in democracies. So while authoritarian regimes such as China are able to speed up the process or able to get things done quicker, that doesn't mean it's of a better quality. And I think that's really where the US and others, and through the B3W initiative, can really make a difference is by actually developing and building high quality infrastructure. We believe in the nations of Africa, in the continent-wide spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation. Yet skeptics of US and European-led projects say they're aimed at specifically targeting Chinese influence rather than working with African countries as business partners. And they lack specific information uh -huh. that have many wondering whether or not they'll result in significant action in Africa. When you talk to the Chinese, they will tell you that we have come a long way with Africa, both culturally and economically. We have had similar problems as Africa, and we want to help them grow because they were in a position where we were. In Africa, you know, the Africans will tell you we need the money. We have a huge infrastructure gap, and uh, it doesn't matter whether the money is blue or red. As long as it can do the job, we will uh, accept it. When we talk to you know, some of the economists that follow China and the African governments, they will tell you that uh, there has been benefit for these projects overall for Africa. How they have been uh, done, uh, the terms, as well as how these projects have been got, you know, is another story. Borrowing countries are less likely to face required austerity if they receive significant aid from non-OECD countries, mostly China. <laughs> Who's the non-OECD? IMF austerity is alive in increasing poverty and inequality. Dude, straight up, if it wasn't for fucking China, these capitalist pig dogs in the chat would not be able to fucking tout that capitalism has created so much wealth and prosperity and have, like, destroyed uh, global poverty, eradicated global poverty. Like, it's bullshit. China internally has eradicated global poverty, okay? That's it. That's it. Without China in the equation, that's not a real thing. And Western banks and their uh, uh, backdated, super outdated, super antiquated uh, neoclassical fucking method of privatization is also continuously uh, impoverishing the third world. This is a, uh, a Boston University Global Development and Policy Center uh, study that, that specifically points to that reality. To be fair, China is a mixed market economy. Absolutely. I don't. But it's but you have to look at what in the 